Hello and welcome to the Mentally Stronger podcast. Today I am going to be talking about a really important distinction that we need to make if we want to be able to stay mentally strong in our lives. And the distinction that we really need to be able to make is the one between facts and stories. And we're going to look at why it's so important for us to know the difference. So to begin with here, let me give you a few examples of the difference between a fact and a story. Fact. She was late. Story. She was late because she's selfish and she doesn't care about anyone but herself. Fact. I currently have $2 in my bank account. Story. I currently have $2 in my bank account and I'm broke. I'm so terrible with money and I'm always going to struggle because of it. Fact. It's raining. Story. It's horrible weather. What a dreadful day. Fact. He hasn't asked me out on a second date yet. Story. He doesn't like me. I'm unattractive and I'll probably always be alone. Right, so you're probably getting uh, the gist of why this is really important. According to dictionary.com, facts and stories are defined as follows. Fact, something that actually exists or existed. Reality, truth. Story, a narrative about the facts, which may be either true or fictitious. Okay, so if you were speaking about facts, you would report what happened totally objectively with nothing added, no meaning on top, no interpretation on top, no story on top. It would be like a camera would have seen it. A camera doesn't have an opinion. The camera doesn't have an emotional reaction. It doesn't have an interpretation. It just reports the scene, right? It's raining. It's not a dreadful day. It's not a horrible day. It's not a dreary day. It's just, it's raining. Our stories about the facts, though, may be colored by our particular beliefs, our past experiences, our mood in that moment, our desires in that moment, our judgments, our opinions, our viewpoints. You get the idea, right? Our stories are so multi-layered and multifaceted and unique and personal to us that if you took 10 people and they saw exactly the same scene and then you took them in separate rooms and asked them what happened, you would probably get 10 different versions of reality. So our stories are basically interpretations of the facts. They're making meaning out of the facts. And this can distort our own ability to see things clearly. In our stories, we often make assumptions and come to conclusions that are not accurate. And they can often be really unhelpful as well. And now, importantly, stories, the stories that we tell ourselves in our minds about what's happening, um, they can be positive, you could say. They could be neutral or they can be negative. Positive and negative just meaning if we tell ourselves certain stories, they can generate a lot of um, unpleasant emotions. And if we tell ourselves other stories, it can generate a lot of pleasant emotions positive emotions, right? But the thing is, is that a lot of our stories do actually create a lot of emotional turmoil, reactivity, hostility towards other people and suffering. That's why it's really, really important every now and then to pause and check in with ourselves and see if we are telling ourselves facts or stories. And if we are telling ourselves a story is it an unhelpful one? Is it generating a lot of negative emotions? Is it generating conflict and hostility? Is it uh, limiting our true potential? Is it, you know, diminishing our self-esteem? Is it, you know, causing us to um, be the best version of ourselves or is it really uh, holding us back? So anytime when you're feeling anxious, Anytime when you're feeling stressed, anytime you're feeling reactive or overwhelmed, it really pays to pause and check in and just see what kind of story we're telling ourselves. Once we can see the stories that we're telling ourselves, if they're unhelpful, we can simply 
let them go. How do we let a story go? It's not about trying to get rid of the thought. We let a story go simply by seeing that it's just a story. It's not a fact. And it's not getting rid of the thought. It's just that it's like breaking a hypnosis, right? When you see that you're just telling yourself an unhelpful story and it's just a story, it's not a fact, then this, the story, the thoughts lose their power to drag you into emotional reactivity. It's only when we buy into the stories that they create suffering and emotional reactivity. For instance, Let's just say you told yourself the story, like you woke up in the morning, you saw it was raining out the window and you, you, you know, you generate this negative thought, oh, what a dreadful day. This is horrible weather. And so then you immediately start to feel an emotional reaction to that thought in your body, right? Negativity starts to happen. You start to feel a little bit grumpy. And then you remember, hang on a second, I'm feeling a little bit of negative emotion. Let me see what kind of story I'm telling myself. And you notice, there I was, I'm telling myself it's a horrible day. I'm telling myself it's a dreadful day. And in that moment, you see, it's just a story. It's not reality. Now you can come back to the fact of the moment. It's simply raining. Now you are free to just be present with the rain and enjoy the sound of the rain, the coolness in the air, the in the moment experience of the rain, right? You can experience the rain without negativity layered on top. Okay. So my invitation is this, the next time you find yourself feeling reactive, any negative emotions at all, hostility towards other people included, just take a pause, take a breath and check in with yourself to see what story you're telling yourself. And if it's unhelpful, just try you know, mentally noting to yourself, oh, that's an unhelpful story. And then bring your full attention back to just the facts of how things are and also bringing yourself back to the present moment. So by doing that, you unhook from the unhelpful stories and you can find more calm, ease and clarity in everyday life. I hope this is really helpful for you. I really encourage you to give this practice a try for a couple of days and just see what effect it has uh, on your body, on your mind, and in your life. As always, thank you for your practice. Thank you for trying to become mentally stronger. It really is a gift that, you know, you not only give to yourself, but ripples out and touches everyone you know, everyone you meet, and ultimately out into the world. If you found this video helpful, you can subscribe to this channel by hitting the subscribe button below. And if you know someone who you think might benefit from listening to this episode, share it with them. Sharing it could really help them feel better and improve the quality of their life. And if you'd like some more in-depth support on becoming mentally stronger, come and check out the coaching and training options that I offer on my website. Thanks for listening. Take care and stay strong.